The first Isle of Man great double bass race of 1978 is underway, setting the pace in the Moses fantasy of Paganini and riding on a Marty bass of 1611 is the American virtuoso Gary Carr. On the south coast of the Isle of Man is the former fishing village of Port Erin, now mainly a small holiday resort. But during one crowded week in August 1978, it was transformed into the most extraordinary international meeting place the island had ever seen, the first international double bass competition and workshop. People went about their business apparently unaware that over 200 double bass players from all over the world, among them some of the greatest exponents of the instrument, were about to descend on the village. One of the founders of the competition is John Bethel, director of the island's annual Music and Arts Festival. Well, the main thing was that when we planned this, that it should be a social, informal workshop and competition. I mean, we're having down here on this beach here, a kipper party, a hot pot, uh, there's a club, 
Uh, there's a medieval banquet in Castle Town, and daily on these hotels along the front there are master classes by some of the eminent bassists in the world who are coming here over the next few days to give master classes uh, for those who are attending both the workshop and competition. Concurrently, at the same time, the, the competition goes on in the Eagle Hotel. It's taken two and a half years to organise and it's come with a, a, a wonderful band of people here on the island who have all done it voluntary. Had we had to pay, I mean, it would have been completely impossible. But all these ladies and, and gentlemen here on the island have been working at this for a year and the postman goes rushing up daily to Mrs Howlett, our secretary, uh, saying, gosh, look, there's a letter here from Turkey. It must be another competitor, and he waits until she opens it, because they're so excited, everybody here, about this competition. I've had, I should imagine, about seven or eight different languages to cope with. But they have tried their best in English, and I've had to reply in English, and we've rather got tied up with it. Um, the replies have been addressed to Dear Honourable Sir Mr Muriel, for one, and I've also been called Honourable Sir, and the replies have been that they're waiting for my magnificence, and they've asked me to keep faith and things like this. Quiet, please. Excuse me. Good evening, everybody. We would like to welcome you to the first international double bass competition. This is the ballot for the playing order. Your names will be called... The co-founder of the competition is Rodney Slatford, co-principal bass of the English Chamber Orchestra and this professor at the Royal College of Music in London. I would say transport has been the biggest problem when uh, our Czech juror didn't arrive, but his luggage did, and then Bert Turetsky arrived from America, but his luggage didn't. This piece is called Failing. It's by Tom Johnson. But you can't actually do a recital of double bass music with nothing to play, and his was in Chicago. But fortunately, that arrived in time. Have a nice lunch and a lovely week at the Isle of Man. You will be allowed 15 minutes to warm up without your accompanist before actually playing to the jury. And all the adrenaline is in the air, so this might make some of you happy. Uh, it's very difficult for me, it's very easy for you, so sit back and enjoy yourself while I fry my brain. <laughs> Number 13. Oh. Failing, a very difficult piece for solo string bass by Tom Johnson. In failing, I am required to read a long text while playing music written above the text. The text must be read out loud at a more or less normal pace, and I must not allow the music to slow me down. The task is fairly easy for a while because there's not much music, and most of it comes at the ends of clauses and sentences, almost like normal punctuation. Later on, there's more music, and the task becomes more difficult. So difficult, in fact, that I will probably not be able to do it without either slowing down my reading speed or else making mistakes in the music. At least the composer feels confident that I will eventually begin to run into trouble, which is why he called the piece failing. Nicole Ann Boyerson. Number three. By now, this task is already rather challenging, but I have practiced the piece quite a bit, and that is a fact as well as simply a line in the text. So unless I'm having a particularly bad morning, I can still handle the music quite adequately without slowing down the delivery of the text. I should also be able to keep everything well in tune and play the dynamic markings accurately if I am concentrating well. I should even be able to maintain a good balance between the speaking and the playing and remember to make the text easy to understand, even though the mood of the music sometimes changes radically. Name, please. I'm Nicole. Boys. Boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, which pieces are you playing than from the choice? Well, I've played with several youth orchestras, but now I'm at college. I want to go abroad to study for two years after that, but um, I haven't had a lot of experience. Which pieces are you playing from the first list? First list? Yeah, yeah. List A. Uh, list A, that's also. This is Michinori Bunya, a competitor from Japan, who now plays in the Würzburg Ensemble in West Germany. And Prelude? Prelude. And Jigu. Duncan McTeer, a competitor from England. He now plays in the Netherlands Chamber Orchestra. Uh, well, it's something to work for, um, something that makes you practice, which is always a good thing. And, uh, well, it's a very interesting event, not only the competition, but the workshop as well, of course. Now, with this particular passage, there is a 
a group of bow, all types of bowings that are possible. While the first stage of the competition takes place behind closed doors, the week's workshop events start off with a master class in orchestral technique given by the professor of double bass at Indiana University, Marie Grodner. Now, there are probably six bowings available for this. And the thing we need to do is think where the focus must be. The first part takes care of itself almost with any bowing. That's the first, you know. That's quite simple. But what about the level of energy for the trill? Is it static? Does it grow? Is it equal to what happens before, etc.? And there's a very fine bowing I found they use in the Minnesota Orchestra, probably coming from the principal, uh, uh, the concertmaster. It's more like a violin bowing in the bass, and they do this. And you see how much bow they get for the up bow trill, because they take all the first part of the measure down. Most bassists are of course okay. orchestral players and opportunities for solo bass playing are inevitably rare. So what is the justification for a competition for soloists? Rodney Slatford. Um, no, I would agree there, but I feel that unless uh, musicians in orchestras are competent on the, their instruments and can turn out a good concerto or a good sonata, I don't see that they're really playing their instruments properly in the orchestra because most of the orchestral parts require a great deal of technique that is just as much demanding as, as that required to play concertos. One, two. Okay, it's a little better. To me, the important thing here, if I were the conductor, I want to hear from the orchestra, dim, bayam, bayam, meaning the rhythmic intensity. Make sure you get your G to sound with an enunciation, not dumb, wom, wom. One, two. point for the whole week's events is the Port Erin Arts Centre, formerly a Methodist church. It now flies the flag of the international competition and workshop. Oh, I can probably help you with the, with the translation. Inside, Rodney Slatford attends an editorial conference of the Daily Scroll, a special paper produced during the week. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice to get a little bit of something, perhaps in German. Well, yeah. Do you think we should we ought to put some of these the, the more important things in, in two or three languages? <laughs> the arts centre is the administrative office for the event, staffed by voluntary helpers who work long hours to ensure things run smoothly. The centre is also a meeting place for all participants where they can talk, buy t-shirts, arrange rehearsals and exchange news and gossip. You see we're in the telegraph this morning, yeah. that long photograph we had taken with all the, all the double bases on the wall with the elephant and the Daily Telegraph. Marvellous publicity, fantastic. Many of the classes and performances take place here, including a master class on the singing bass by Gary Carr, one of the great bass players of the world and a competition judge. 
So my first instrument was the voice. I studied singing, and then I gave a recital, my first recital, and I sang all the way through, and at, at the end of each piece, the entire audience cried. <laughs> so um, I decided, <laughs> since the songs that I had chosen for that special occasion were, for the most part, happy songs, um, I got the message. And, and I looked for an instrument that was as close to the human voice as possible. Well, since my family goes back seven generations of double bassists, this wasn't at all difficult. And uh, as a matter of fact, if I could sing today, there's no sound that I would like to sound more like than the sound of my double bass. It's so that the For bass players, the bow is almost as important as the bass itself. One of the featured events is a lecture on making, buying, and everyday care of the bow by the American bow maker George Rubino. Briefly, I mentioned before that you should only get a bow if it's made of Pernambuco. Now, we have a real surefire test to know whether it's real Pernambuco or not. Pernambuco is a very hard and dense wood, very straight grained. And it also is a wood does, that does not float. So if you want to find out if your bow is, absolute, is Pernambuco, you can fill up the tub upstairs, and you can drop your bow in it. If it goes to the bottom, you've got Pernambuco. In another room, Neville Whitehead, a New Zealander now living in London, who is both a player and repairer of the base, holds a surgery for running repairs. He also gives a lecture on everyday base care. As I have new people come to me, they seem very shy and say, uh, Mr. Whitehead, would you mind uh, terribly if, uh, well, you know, I, I'm not telling you your job, or, you know, but would you mind? I say, look, you just tell me what you want. Because uh, from this, I can get some idea of what the problem might be, you see. Especially when you've got a problem with the instrument. I feel like a psychiatrist sometimes. <laughs>
Unity! Come on, dear. What about Rodney? Stop the cigar. I do, I do. <laughs> Can't be queen of all the t-shirts and not be in the photograph. <laughs> Come on, Tim. <laughs> These two. <laughs> Another meeting place in the Arts Centre is the bookshop, selling records, music, magazines and books. The shop is run by a local bookshop owner, Alan Picard. Uh, well, my, my involvement mainly um, is in providing a specialist uh, facility for double bass players that are here for the International Competition and Workshop. We've scoured the globe, actually, for all the different publishers uh, who have got double bass music in their lists and uh, got it together here on the island. I suspect that in the past there's been very little in the double bass repertoire and what music does exist is in fact uh, transcribed from other instruments repertoire. And we've got a great deal of music for uh, the double bass which has been transcribed but uh, contemporary music I think is definitely on the increase but um, not a lot of it yet available to the general public. Is uh, your music? It's my music, but uh, yes. honest, it'll, be, it'll be published when I get, as soon as I get back. See, is there a book of the music? Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. See. I'm going to send it to you. Okay. Are you, I mean, it'd be a marvelous encore piece. Okay. Yeah, this, this is it. Yeah. Ah, yes. It, it's called um, La the Somnambulistic Soldier, the Sleepwalker Journey. Oh, yes. So, so when you're sleeping, you're walking in your sleep, you think, oh, I pray. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> Very nice. Franco Petracchi, soloist and professor of bass from Italy, gives a masterclass on virtuoso technique. But why is it that nobody dares come forward as a pupil? I think possibly because they're a little bit frightened. There has been so much music of very high standard going on. Franco Petrarchi from Italy, he wasn't going to bring his double bass. Then he just turned up at the airport with it, and he was going to give three lectures on how to teach. And it turned out that he gave practically three recitals. Petrarchi is playing the notoriously difficult concerto by Hans-Werner Henze. I, I, I play with the piano. Perché is a rhythm very interesting. That was really uh, way out of most people's range, you know. He was doing the Henser Concerto, which not many people uh, know at all. It's, it's one of the hardest pieces out for double bass. 
Ron Taylor from England plays in orchestras in West Germany. He's not a competitor, but is here for the workshop. One of the most promising competitors is Dennis Trembley from America. I am co-principal bassist in the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra. I've been with them for eight years. I am a student and my friend is solo double bass player in Zagreb Philharmonic Orchestra. I thought long, a long time whether I could afford it, for the ferries cost a lot of money. Then I decided to sleep all, day, uh, all the way in the car and to cook uh, what I've brought from home with a small gas stove and so it's okay with the money. It cost me about the, uh, the amount of the first prize, 1,500 pounds, because you have to pay full fare for your base as, as another person. So if you don't win? If I don't win, I lose 1,500 pounds, but the experience will be well worth that to me. Very unique experience in my career. We got some money from Yugoslav competition, competition for double bass in Yugoslavia, and we saved it for, for here. And our university helped us a bit. So we came here, but not as competitors. We wanted to see it for the first time. And next time, I'm sure we'll, we'll come as competitors. Well, I just said, I put my base on this side so that I have a bit more room on the other side and I, uh, you can pull down the seat. And uh, I met the sleeping bags on it and it's quite okay. It's not as cold and as in the tent. We slept, uh, one night I slept in the tent, it was really cold there. <laughs> The week's activities demonstrated the extraordinary range and versatility of the double bass, but the organizers were shrewd enough to introduce variety in the form of the Nash Ensemble, who gave two performances. This is a quartet by Johann Schberger, with the important double bass part performed by a player from East Germany, Klaus Trumpf. Each evening there was a cocktail hour provided by a group of generous donors and on the Tuesday this also brought the announcement of the semi-finalists. The 41 competitors have been whittled down to eight and suddenly the competition takes on an atmosphere of tension. And now here is the news you have all been waiting for or perhaps some of you are terrified to hear. Gerald MacDonald, the chairman of the jury, will say something about it all. Well, I'm going to announce straight away the eight semi-finalists. Dennis Trembley, USA. <laughs> For their semi-final recitals, Competitors have to play a program of 30 minutes consisting of some set works and one own choice. Here, Dennis Trembley is playing Extreme by Loyosh Montag.
The second semi-finalist is Joel Quarrington from Canada. I studied with uh, Tom Monaghan in Canada, Franco Petracchi in Rome, Ludwig Streicher in Vienna. Are you in fact still a student now or are you already a professional? Well, I'm a professional but always a student, yes. Quarrington is playing the Elegie by Bottesini. Excellent, but uh, the standards aren't quite as high as I expected them to be. Four of the semi-finalists were from America. This is Mark Bernat. It seems like most of the better players apparently are coming from the States, rather than it's not even out throughout the world yet, standard of baseball. Bernat is playing the jig from Bach's third unaccompanied cello suite, which is particularly difficult on the bass. Feeney, also from America, plays his own choice, The Elephant's Gavotte by David Walter.
The eight jury members come from seven countries. Their chairman, until recently general manager of the Philharmonia Orchestra, is Gerald MacDonald. In a competition like this, one's looking for absolute standard, a ready-made performer. In some competitions, we're looking for promise as well. Naturally, we will remember the people we promised, but at this stage, we're looking for people who perform really well and uh, will command the public. We had basses come in all sizes and all shape. We had one today that was shaped like a pear with no distinct curves in the instrument. Um, and uh, more like a guitar, I should say, like a guitar, bass shaped like a guitar and small. And we had small players come in with gigantic basses and large bass players coming in with tiny basses. We had them coming in with uh, normal chairs and sitting down playing like a cello. And then we had other bass players coming in with stools um, playing like you normally see in an orchestra. Then we had those standing up. We had those playing with overhanded bowing and some with underhanded bowing. I mean, ev and different tuning. Some had a score to tour tuning, which is a higher tuning. Some had orchestral tuning, lower tuning. And each of these things, of course, create a different kind of sound, I suppose. But it's the sound that's important. So in a way, you have to be blind to it. And I listen for quality. Uh, I don't care whether they sit on the floor and play the bass lying down. If they play musically and brilliantly, this is what we're looking for. This is from Czechoslovakia and plays a piece by Glier. He is Jerzy Hudec. <laughs> Of course, there were language problems. Michinori Bunya, a Japanese, has to resort to German to express his gratitude to other competitors for what he's learnt from them. For his semi-finals, he plays the one compulsory work, a commissioned sonata for unaccompanied bass by the Liverpool-born composer David Ellis. <laughs> The last semi-finalist is Entro Radukanov from Bulgaria. I am a professional player. I play in a Bulgarian chamber orchestra, a Collegium for chamber music. Is this the first competition you've ever been in for? No, it isn't the first competition. Uh, I, I had second prize in competition in uh, Geneva, uh, 1969. And uh, this competition is my second competition. <laughs> and I 
very happy that uh, I go to second audition. Radukanov plays his own choice, Mutiv by another Bulgarian, Tabakov. Well, that's the end of the semi-finals, and I'm sorry to say that none of the 12 British competitors got there. Three of those came from Birmingham. Well, I've picked the Canadian and the, was it, the, the um, Hungarian. Hungarian. And, no. Uh, no, no, he wasn't Hungarian. He Bulgarian. Was the Bulgarian. No, 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 the Hungarian. The Czechoslovakian. Yes, yeah. I've picked the Czechoslovakian. Those are two of my three. Those are, those are my definite two choices. The third, well, not so sure. Alan Stevenson, Karen Newham and John Tattersdill have all been members of the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, where John Tattersdill is now principal bass. Well, I picked a Canadian, uh, Quarrington, and then Yuri Hudek or Hujek from Czechoslovakia, and then a Bulgarian called Entesho Radukanov. Extraordinary names. Yes, and extraordinary bass players. It's almost as if British bass playing is in the dark ages, and uh, we've just never heard anything like this. It's incredible. All three of us are a little wary, actually, of going home now, mm. because uh, we don't quite know how we're going to explain to people exactly what we've seen. Well, I very much enjoyed playing, but you're up against professionals and such a high standard that I didn't expect to get anywhere, but I really enjoyed playing anyway. And I think that that when you're playing in a competition it's more important just to um, play for the sake of playing and getting a higher standard than for actually competing and wanting to get through but I really enjoyed it anyway. So what happens next for you? You'll stay here for the rest of the week anyway I expect but then what will yes. you do? Uh, well then back to Holland, start work on Monday morning at 9.30, perish the thought um, and then I look forward to three years time and I've got three years to practice so it can't be a bad thing. So you, you fully intend already to come back to the, the next competition in three years' time? I think so. It, it's a, a, an excellent thing to, to work for. One has to practice and, well, I need something like that to make me practice. I'm a bit lazy and I like my beer. <laughs> I don't think really the British mentality, uh, certainly amongst bass players, is really geared up to competition playing. I think now, with so many people here, Bass players in Britain will go away and do a lot of practice, particularly the young people. We have some young boys came over, one was 16, and I think one is only 11 or 12. And they're both extremely interested, and I see the next generation of bass players all over the world being of a much, much higher standard. We have a sort of renaissance, the same that happened with, well, the bassoon, if you like, or the viola uh, and other instruments. I think now it's happening with the double bass. I asked Joe MacDonald to tell us who are the candidates from this work uh, from the competition to go forward to the final at the Gaiety Theatre on Friday. Joe MacDonald. I would like to say just quickly the final will be judged on the playing of the concerto in conjunction with the candidates performance in the semi-final recitals today. The three in order of playing are Trembly, <laughs> Hudek and Radukanov, Bulgaria. 
The informal atmosphere that was such a feature of the competition throughout the week is especially apparent at the medieval supper held at Castle Russian. Gerald MacDonald, the jury chairman, acts as wine waiter. The three finalists, Denis Tremblay from America, the Czech Jerzy Hudec and the Bulgarian Encho Radukhanov are all quite happy to relax together before joining battle in the finals. It is very, very nice. And in fact, uh, the atmosphere is so relaxing, you know. So everybody is making jokes and everybody is laughing, but we discuss serious things and learn very, very much. It's not possible to learn it from records or from books. It's the, the only way and the best way. But when the party's over, the finalists settle down to prepare for the last stage of the competition. For the rest, there are still a few events to fill the time, among them the Würzburg Double Bass Ensemble giving the world premiere of a Sinfonia Piccola for eight double basses by Bertolt Hummel. This is one of 11 world premieres and 18 British premieres heard on the island throughout the week. Travel on the Isle of Man can be a delightful experience and jury members as well as audience arrive at Douglas by steam train for the finals of the competition. Each of the three finalists has to play one of three prescribed concertos accompanied by the Scottish Chamber Orchestra and conducted by Kenneth Montgomery. First, Dennis Tremblay is playing the opening movement of the Dittersdorf Concerto in E major.
The second finalist, Jerzy Hudetz from Czechoslovakia, plays the Bottesini Concerto No. 2 in B minor. This is the slow movement. Encho Radukanov from Bulgaria, again in the Dittersdorf concerto, this time the last movement.
Inevitably, there's a tense pause while the members of the jury make their decision. Perhaps some sadness, too. It's been a remarkable week, a happy and stimulating international event where music has broken down barriers and overcome problems of language, where international virtuosi and humble beginners have mixed like old friends and where East European colleagues have been welcomed in the West. Whatever the result tonight, there are many who are already planning to come back for the next double bass competition in 1981. I'm sure we all feel very happy to welcome Jiri Hudek of Czechoslovakia. So Jerzy Hudec of Czechoslovakia is declared the winner. And he receives his check from the Lieutenant Governor of the Isle of Man, Sir John Warburton Paul. Thank you.